Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the time may be, welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you are new around here. My name is James, aka Widowed, and today I am giving you an aggressively mediocre player's guide to the Phantom Mosper. I was just sat killing this boss a bunch on Slayer Task, and I figured I'm sat here killing it. I may as well put out a video on how to do it while I'm at it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm just going to go over the gear and inventory setup and, and explain what we're doing as we go to kill the bastard. Whether you're doing it as first time for the quest or trying to farm it like I am at the minute, uh, this method will work fine. It might not be the most efficient method, but it's also not the most mechanically demanding the way that I do things. So, yeah, this is what we're going with. We've got our best range gear. Well, nearly. I've got crystal pieces, but there's no real point using them without the, the buffer. And we need a crossbow for the Phantom Musper. So whatever your best crossbow is, plus range gear. Non-degradable stuff if you've got it. Like, Blessed is fine. I don't have a Blessed body. Got the Archer's Ring Eye, Barrow Gloves, an Unholy Book. Ruby Bolts E, very important. These sapphire bolts are also very important. If you got the dragon crossbow or better, you can use dragon ruby and sapphire bolts, which is going to be much better. These diamond bolts are also going to be relevant for a brief window during the fight. And you want your avers, whatever next slot you have. I'd just have a fury, no switches here. Uh, and I'm wearing a slayer helmet because I'm on task, but if not, you can bring whatever helm you like or whatever helm switches you like. And then I've got a six-way switch for mage, which will be mystics, basically. Like, I don't have very good mage gear. If you have a low mage level, then you're probably going to struggle. I'm not going to lie. Like, 94 would be the base minimum, because we're going to be using ice barrage. But if you... Like, I'm, I've got an imbued heart, so that's always active. I basically always have my ice barrage up. But yeah, you want to be at, at, like, 94 mage, or have boost to 94 mage so you can use Ice Barrage for this fight. It is required for the method. But other than that, it's just like a standard mage swap. Got the Ancient Scepter. If you have never killed Musby, you won't have one of these yet because it's part of a drop from her. But the Ancient Staff is absolutely fine here. Just gives me a bit extra damage. Uh, and if you don't have Ring Swaps, you can use the Ring of Shadows uh, from Desert Treasure 2 if you have it. That is how I'm getting there, which is why I have it in my inventory, but I prefer to the ring swaps because the extra accuracy is nice. And then we've just got some potions, range, defense, a couple of prayer pots, and some food. With this sort of layout, I tend to get two to three kill trips, depending on how much <laughs> how much accidental damage I take and you know what if with supply drops it can go higher, but Shouldn't tend to drop supplies at that much, though. The loot is pretty decent. 35 kills here on the tracker. Uh, just over 3 mil in alcables. I'm an Iron Man, so I have no idea what the GE prices are. But, yeah. Let's uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's go kill Musper a couple times. So, I'm getting there with the Ring of Shadows just before I leave the bank. If you don't have the Ring of Shadows, the other way to get there is an icy boss all that will take you uh, just to the overground and then you go down some stairs. You know where to do it if you've done the quest. And then we're gonna go down here. We're gonna pre-pot up with all our stuff and we're gonna go in and see which form Musper is on. Musper has two forms. They are ranged and melee. The ranged one, she's gonna be green. The melee one is like gray. Uh, if it's on melee, we're hitting with mage. If it's on range, we're hitting with range. So that is the the basics of the fight. So click this. We'll see. She's on ranged. We're going to be on range too. We'll get that gear on. Start attacking. Now when she is on the ranged form, she has a chance to do a magic attack. Which can be indicated by that sound there. Swapping over to the melee form now, so we're going with mage and she's got oh why am I staff bashing? My auto cast got taken off for some reason. We're trying to freeze her right now. Because as you can see, it can hit through pro right. For some reason I just can't catch a freeze. Okay, there we go. We can barrage for a bit of extra health. 
Um, I got a bit interrupted from what I was saying. Because every 100 damage that you deal to Musper, she changes forms between her melee and ranged. That's how that works. Uh, but yes, yeah, she can do a magic attack in the ranged form. You have to listen out for that, because if it connects, it will slap you in the face, and it will apply a, a nasty debuff. So I think it's called Corruption, and it drains your prayer for quite a while. Okay, there's two parts in the fight where she does special attacks. This is one of them, shadows spawn around the room, and you just don't get hit by them. Well, you try not to get hit by them. She's always going to come back in this corner, which is just, like, the north corner. That's the magic attack again she just did there. You just got to listen out for that one and switch to magic as soon as you hear it. As soon as it sounds like she's about to spray jizz all over you first, that's when you... Brimage. She only does that when she's in the range form, not when she's in the melee form. So if you get freeze on Musper, you're good to just sit there and do whatever you want. And here's the other spec coming in when she's at like 30%. The spikes that pop up around the room uh, will start to chase you around. And if they connect with you, you'll get slapped. So don't let them. Uh, they're not too bad. They hit for like 15s. Same as if you stand on any of the spikes around the room at any point. And you'll see that one appears underneath you every time you swap forms as well. There's quite a few different mechanics going on with this boss, but honestly, it's super fun. And I find it to be a really rewarding experience because when you're doing it right and you get like a perfect kill with no mistakes, it just it feels so good. The most important things to remember, while she's grey, we're pretty melee and... Uh, hit with mage while she is green it's range range stay out of melee range as much as you can blood barrage up to heal while she's frozen switch to diamond bolts when she's below 200 health Okay, and then this is the final thing. I think I'm going to be safe here. You have to be... Yeah, okay. So you saw, like, the angle of the attack there. You have to get behind the spikes, basically. Get it so the spikes between you and her. Uh, and at this point, you want to swap to your Sapphire Bolts, because otherwise, you're barely going to do any damage at all. But every time you Sapphire Bolt spec, you hear that sound, and you hit for, like, a 30. Uh, if you're not using Sapphire Bolts in that phase, it's going to take you about six years. Trust me, you don't want to. You don't want to bother. Like, take the sapphire bolts. It is so much easier. There's the mage sound. And yeah, and th this last phase after she does that thing where you have to hide, it's all just ranged with the the possibility of mage attacks. Easy peasy. It's a nice supply drop actually. Okay, I'm going to stay and do a couple more kills, because, like, th there's a lot going on in this boss, so I appreciate that, you know, one kill, not exactly enough to figure out everything that's going on here. I could probably, with the supplies we just got dropped, I could probably do, like, three, four kills on this trip, so. Ah, I'm on the wrong form. want to have that pro melee on. Uh, you also want to run around as much as possible, because... There is much more chance that Musper hits a zero on you if she's been forced to move recently. If you just stand in one spot while she's on the melee form, it like the damage increases and hits through prayer more regularly. So you do have to keep moving around. You can't just sit in one position and be like, ah, I've got prayer melee on, I'm good. It will tick up. Damage will like double every time basically. Because this is instance as well, I can leave all that shit on the floor and pick it up whenever I want. That's the mage attack. Make sure you move every time she switches forms so that you don't get that spike under you. Causing nasty business. And when the screen turns white, that's when you know she's doing a spec. So because she hasn't disappeared, I know it's the one where the spikes are going to home in on me. 
It's always one of each of the two, but random which one's first. Spikes are pretty easy to avoid for the most part, he says as he gets hit by them. And they do stop chasing you eventually. I think if she walks over them, it also makes them disappear. Like, not disappear, but it makes them stop. And then the other spec, when she disappears. Now, you can still attack her in this phase, but. It's going to make your character move around into the shadows more than likely. It's easier if you just try and avoid them. So you don't take a shit ton of damage like I just did. Thankfully we've got plenty of supplies on the floor over there. That was terrible. And that wasn't good. I just got hit off Mage Prayer. So you can see I've got this horrible corruption thing on me now. That's going to be draining my prayer like mad. It's actually very hard to do this boss while talking over it. Corruption does wear off eventually, so you don't have to worry about it for too long, but it'll drain probably around 20 prayer in the time that it's on you. We're over to the diamonds now because she's pretty low. The rubies are not worth. Generally, they're like around 250 health after the second spec from her. It's around when you want to be making the switch. Please, no, that's gonna hurt. Maybe not. We good? I think we good. Need to refresh the imbued heart though. Yeah, okay. She teleports to the middle, hide behind a rock, swap over to your sapphire bolts, get back on the bitch. Can also be beneficial to get out of cover. Because you don't want to get trapped behind these spikes in the final phase. So being in open cover at this stage is actually better. Means I have more space to manoeuvre during the final phase where she's throwing spikes everywhere. Now unfortunately my sapphires are not popping off right now. And as a result you can see it's taken me fucking years. This is why we bring them, because at least we have the chance of hitting for 30s and 35s otherwise. It's just like this the whole way, no matter what other bolts or ammunition you bring. I should rearrange bot, that might help. Does tend to switch to the magic attack more during this phase and the last phase as well. And like every three attacks in this last phase, she spikes you. So you gotta watch out for that. It's gonna happen right now. And the room does fill up, so it's sort of like a DPS check this last bit. Can you kill the boss before you have no more room to move? There she goes. Oh, another supply drop? That's actually insane. Uh, I'm going to be here a while, so I may as well film another attempt as well. If I can sort my invent in time. Because this is sick. She's giving me so many supplies right now. Don't have much food in my inventory. Let's get that shark. Easy there. 
Go look at all these super stars. It's naughty. Beautiful. You know if you hit a ruby bolt spec, she's going to switch because it's going to hit for 100. So it's always going to be enough to make a switch over. Making use of those blood barrages as much as possible to preserve health. Taking a lot of unnecessary damage, I'm not gonna front. Like, it's not good. Why am I bursting? What am I doing? Oh look, 94 hit points. That's nice. Yeah, I honestly don't think there's too much more to say about this boss. The first kill felt very hectic trying to explain everything, but I feel like I've got most of it, uh, most of it explained now. The quest boss is exactly the same mechanically, it's just a little easier so you don't have to worry about any different mechanics there if you'd kill in for for the very first time before she's in a phantom form uh, it's just an easier fight just less health hits less hard but I honestly I have a lot a lot of fun at this boss I think it's really well designed there's a bunch of things to focus on, but once you learn it, it can be really rewarding. I haven't even had a Venet a shard yet on this account. Should be fine just here, but I might not be. Oh, that was close. I almost got hit. Oops, did get hit with corruption. I'm gonna do my intro now as of oh my outro now as we're finishing the boss because uh, I'm gonna be staying here for a while. Muspa is gonna respawn, so I don't wanna. Have to cut off my ultra because she respawns. If you have found this video helpful, please do leave a like or a comment down below to let me know. It's always super nice to know when I am helping people out. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more aggressively mediocre guides in future or my other content. The return of one hour limit locks will not be long. Just finished the series yesterday and I'm already missing it and theory crafting things, so it's coming whether I want it to or not. But yeah, that is the Phantom Musper. Till next time, look after yourself, be lovely to one another, and I will see you on the next one.